Hi all, welcome to this video where we will introduce the new Amazon Redshift Data API. My name is Vaidi and I'll be joined a little later by my colleague Harshida and we're both from the Redshift team here at AWS. Amazon Redshift can now be accessed using the built-in data API, making it easy to build web services based applications and integrating with services including AWS Lambda, AWS AppSync and AWS Cloud9. Let's start by discussing what uh, our customers have been asking us that uh, led us to build this feature. Our customers have been asking, how do I get started after I create the first cluster? What driver do I need to use? How to create my first query right after I create my first cluster? How can I use Redshift from a Lambda function? Do I need to use a driver? How do I build an event-driven pipeline for Redshift using components within the AWS ecosystem? How to run a query on Redshift using JavaScript? The fundamental challenge across all these questions as we tried to identify a theme was that Redshift could not be accessed from programming languages that the AWS SDK supports or from AWS Lambda functions without having to depend on third-party drivers. The Data API simplifies access to Amazon Redshift by removing the need to manage database connections and credentials. Instead, you can execute SQL commands to an Amazon Redshift cluster by simply invoking a public service endpoint to run queries against that cluster directly using the AWS SDK. The Redshift Data API simplifies data access, ingest, and egress from languages supported with AWS SDK such as Python, Go, Java, Node.js, PHP, Ruby, and C++ so you can focus on building applications versus managing infrastructure. You can access it from the command line interface. And since the data API leverages IAM user credentials or database credentials stored in AWS Secrets Manager, you do not need to pass credentials in API calls. And finally, the data API stores your query results for 24 hours and is asynchronous so you can retrieve your results faster. There are a number of use cases that will benefit from the launch of the data API. Namely, retrieving and manipulating data programmatically in Redshift, integrating with SageMaker notebooks to make, data, uh, make access easier for data scientists and analysts, and simplifying the process of loading and unloading data from Redshift. Next, I will invite Harshida to demonstrate how you can access Redshift from the AWS command line interface using the data API. Thank you, Wadi. I'll now walk you through how you can access Amazon Redshift from a command line using Data API. For this demo, I'm going to use an existing uh, Redshift uh, cluster, uh, Data API, which is already pre-spun up. For the database credentials, I'm going to leverage a Secrets Manager, which is going to store the database uh, credential, which I will be using as part of the CLI demo. Let's go ahead and get started. We'll do AWS help and we'll grab for Redshift. So now we can see Redshift data is uh, accessible through the command line. Now we'll get started and see what kind of functions we can access with Redshift data. So you can Cancel statements, describe statements, execute statements. The statements that you can execute could be DDL or DML. List databases, schema statements, and tables. Let's take a look at what are the existing schemas in the data API Redshift cluster that we already have. So with this, we are calling list schema, providing the database, the cluster ID, which is data API, and secrets manager, or the ARN for the secret. The database that we are connecting to, which is dev and the region, right now I'm using US West 2. So this is listing all the schemas which are present on that Redshift cluster. So now let's look at the tables which are in the schema ADB305. So to get the list of the tables, we'll execute list tables function. 
there are these are the external tables uh, within that schema, and the one that we are going to execute the query against is NY pub table, which is the publicly available New York taxi data. Now let's execute uh, the SQL statement uh, to figure out the min and the max here. And once you execute uh, the SQL statement or execute statement, you will get an ID. So this is uh, the ID that is provided by Data API. Once we have the ID, let's identify the status or figure out the status of that query. And for this, we are going to run describe statement. Uh, the query has completed, so it's finished. And it will provide you information on the duration. And this data is available for 24 hours to fetch. Now to fetch the results from this query ID, we are going to execute get statement results. And this is the output, the min and the max value of the year 2009 and 2016. So with this, what we saw is how you can get started in 10 seconds, in less than 10 seconds, once you have a Redshift cluster, to start querying using data API and execute DML or DDL statements against your Redshift cluster. With the second demo, we'll dive into how you can leverage AWS SDK in your Python programmatically using Boto3. With Data API, this requires no driver management or database connection management is needed. Plus, the execution of the query against Redshift cluster is asynchronous in nature. So now let's look at the Python code. And in the Python code, we'll import Boto3, specify the cluster, the database, the user, and the region where the Redshift cluster is. Secondly, we'll get the client for Redshift data, and then execute statement to execute the query against the Redshift cluster using the same New York taxi data where we will retrieve the type of the taxis and the corresponding record count in the year of 2016, month of January and February. The query execution is going to run asynchronously, and this execute statement will return a query ID. We will use the query ID to describe the statement, and which will give us the status of the query ID. And once the query has completed, the status will be finished. And once it's completed, we will retrieve by the results using get statement results. The data, the format of the get statement result will be in a JSON format, which would include column metadata and records. And for the purpose of the display, we'll use data frame to format the output. So now go ahead and execute this statement. So executing the query provided this query ID. And using that query ID, we fetched the results, the output of which is in the JSON format. So you get column metadata and the records, which is the output of the query results. So for this query, we got total of three records as the output. And here is the corresponding formatted display. Thank you for watching.